Okay, we're um, we're going to tackle this HSC question. And it's a 2014 HSC question. We're presented with this exploded isometric over here, and we notice that it's worth eight marks. And um, working on our system of 1.8 minutes per mark, um, eight times 1.8 is going to equal to it's 14.4 minutes we have to do this this question roughly speaking so that's worth to note next thing equipment basically um, these 45 and the 30 set square pencil with a sharp point pencil sharpener if you need it an eraser which you most likely will use and a calculator over here because you're going to do some calculations all right Having said all that, what is the question? Well, the next page here it is. It's to. Kind of a bit glary, isn't it? It's to draw a full sectional view of the assembled tow bar when viewed from the direction of the arrow. The first thing to note is full sectional view. So that's important. Now, next thing is when viewed from the direction of the arrow. So another thing is make sure that you draw it in the direction you're supposed to be drawing. So there's the direction of the arrow. And they've been kind enough to start you off over here. The section plane is to pass through the centre line, contain the M16 threaded holes and the 22mm holes in the tow bar. So there is the um, section plane, obviously, that wants to be going through these areas here. So it's basically going to follow along that centre line of the tongue. Now, um, dimension, dimension, so significantly, dimension the overall length of the tongue and the diameter of the ball. So there are only going to be two dimensions over here. Okay? Well, I suggest a way of proceeding with this would be to get a rough idea of what this thing is going to look like. So there it is. Um, and we can even draw it on here, I suppose, even if we do it in a small scale. Um, a bit hard with the way it's been positioned in the middle of the page, but we're going to have a toe ball, we'll have a centre line passing down through here. It's going to have a flange on the toe ball, like so. It's just a rough sketch, just to roughly, because there's a lot of parts to go in here. Now there's a threaded section, which goes a certain distance down. And on that threaded section there's going to be a collar. So it's going to have a collar. That's the collar over there. The collar is 16 millimetres and the width of the actual toe bar here is also 16. So that tells you that the, the, uh, the tongue of the toe bar is going to be the same width as the collar. It will poke out a bit like that and then it's going to go down here and down across. Now I'm going to split it over the drawing just for the sake of it because I can't get the whole thing in. I just want a rough drawing here now. And importantly, working down through the parts that are all sitting on this central axis, there's going to be a washer sitting underneath here. There'll be a washer and a nut sitting above the washer. And I'm assuming that this, this threaded section is going to be poking out further beyond that. Now it's all going to be sectioned. So we know that we don't section nuts, we don't section... Um, threaded bolts, we don't section shafts, we don't sec section washers. So what are we sectioning? Well we're going to be sectioning this little collar here, so that's going to be sectioned that little collar. We know that the actual tow bar itself is going to be sectioned, the tongue of the tow bar is going to be sectioned, so we can do a section here like this. It's only rough here now. If it's a long thing, you might want to do it like a part section in here. We know that we've got to have two, two holes sitting down the end here, and they're threaded holes. So there's two threaded holes, and we're going to be sectioning. Remember when you do section over internal threads, you cover all the way up to the solid part of the threaded section. Okay, there'll be centre lines here, centre line through there, 
Now over here, as I said, bolt knot section, nut um, nut knot sections. So we're not going to see the section. And okay, so it's all looking okay there. All right. This is. It's noticed that it is a um, spring washer. See, it's labelled as a spring washer. You can indicate a spring washer by just putting a couple of little breaks in the uh, in the washer. Okay. Dimensions detail there. Uh, looks like we're okay. All right. Now, one more thing to be aware of here is the the scale. So we're told that this. Toval, for example, 50 meter, 50 mil, diameter 50 meter sphere. What size are they giving us here? Put a ruler on it, it's actually 45 millimeters. So we're going to have to scale everything to make it fit this dimension. So, um, simple scale 50 divided by 45 is going to equal to 1.11. So, say 1.1. So, we've got a increase all the dimensions from our drawing to 1.1 by 1.1 so 30 would go to 33 50 is going to go to 55 um, M16 this is when we actually measured onto the drawing M16 is going to be um, M17.6 and 2 millimeters is going to go to go 2.2 and so forth. So we have to remember that with all our dimensions when we come to doing the drawing. Okay, so there's my rough sketch. I'm pretty happy. I think I know what I'm doing now. There, and a little bit over here. Now I can start drawing it on the page. And it should be a lot easier following my guide that I've got. Alright, well we can use our, our set squares to get ourselves some parallel edges. We've been started off with this edge. So I'm trying to show you here what I do. My eyes are a little bit on the sore side. Alright, so line up um, an edge that you have here, and then by sliding the the uh, the set squares up and down, you can obtain some parallel edges. Now, we've got a central axis over here, so I can just take a line straight down from that, give myself a vertical. It's going to be a... Um, uh, center line, so I can just carry it on like that. Now, from here, we have a shaft, a threaded shaft, following down here, and it's the diameter M16, and the pitch is 2. So, M16 is now going to be 17.6, which is say about 18, so I'm going to make it approximately 9 millimeters. I'm not have to worry about half a, half a millimeter. Here it is. And now, um, travel these lines through. And the papers are a bit awkward here. So I'll line them up here with the center line and use the sliding surface of the 45 degree set square to give me my parallel lines. Just judge them by eye as well as you're doing them, just to make sure they look about right. Sometimes your measurements can be a bit wrong. And then um, remember too that you've got a pitch, and your pitch, your thread depth is going to be half the pitch. So if it's 2.2 it's going to be 1.1, that's about approximately that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, It's the method that's more important here now. Accuracy is important now as well. Okay, so there's my pitch. Now, how long is this thread going to be? Well, according to the measurements up here, it's 40 millimeters. So that'll make it 44, according to our scale. So 44 is going to be here. So at this point, I'm going to have a... the end of my threaded section, line them up, like that, and I'm going to have a nut and a washer. Now the washer we're told from our drawing over here is a um, 
three millimeters, we'll make it three point three, and twenty six diameter. So three millimeters in width takes it to here, and it's going to be twenty six millimeters in diameter. So twenty six times one point one, which is annoying to have to do these calculations, but that's the way it is. We'll make it twenty eight point six. Divide that by 2, it's going to be 14.3. So 14.3 either side here, 28.6 to there. Okay, so we now have, and I can think you know, many times you can just basically follow your lines through by gauging distances and looking to see that they're parallel, it can save you some time. Make sure you can do this well though, otherwise, if you don't, then uh, it's going to look terrible. And it's three millimeters. There's my line for three millimeters. So there's my spring washer sitting there. Now I'm drawing this lightly because I'm going to firm over it afterwards. I notice too that we've got a collar, and the collar is diameter 22 with 16 internal measurement, which means that it's got a wall thickness of four, five, six, three millimeters wall thickness, which would make it 3.3. So we've got a 3.3 .3 wall thickness coming off out of here, and the same on that side. So there it is there. So there's a collar that sits inside here. 3.3 and 3.3. Okay. Now I'm going to lightly section this because I know it's going to be sectioned and I want it to appear to be so. Now you could do this with a ruler or if you've got some good hand skills just do it by hand. I'll double check it in a minute. I now have a nut. Now remembering that nuts have a width which is a proportion of the diameter. So if you're drawing a nut um, the, uh, the width of the nut I think is 0 0.6 the diameter. So the diameter of this shaft here is 16 mil. The nut will be 0 0.6 times 16 mil. So your calculator comes in handy here. 0 0.6 times 16 equals that. Multiply it by 1.1. We've got 10.56. So 10.5 mil will be the nut. And uh, let's, it's going to sit above that spring washer about there. Now again, I'm going to guess this. I could take a dimension up here and get it perfectly, but I can judge that pretty well. It's not a long line. There it is. So that's the width of the nut. Now, between the flats, or between the uh, the edges of the hexagon of the nut, so there's your nut, and you're going to have a hexagon shape like this. Between the edges here is 1.8 the diameter. You have to know that. So 1.8 the diameter of the shaft. Shaft 16 times 1.8 equals that, 28.8, multiply that by 1.1, we're going to get 31.68, so 31.7. So the nut width is 31.7, divide that by 2, it's just over 15. So it's almost the same size as the washer, really it's actually bigger than the washer. It's almost 16, so it's sitting out there at about 16 millimetres. and I'm going to drop that nut down I'll use the set squares this time just for the sake of illustration so you can see it a bit awkward doing it like that that's better ok, the light's not helping me either ok, line it up with the centre line and there's one surface of my nut, and there's the other surface, a little bit wider, I think. Okay, so there's my nut. Now, it's useful technique to remember that the flats of your nut, when you display them, they, you have to show two, 
two of the edges of the nut. It's useful to remember that they're going to be roughly in between the inner and outer diameter of the thread. So when I show them, that's how they roughly work out to be there and in here as well. About halfway. Like that. There's my nut. And you can also indicate the nut if you want by showing the little curved surfaces that would always usually be there on a nut. Like that. That helps to indicate it. We're not going to section the nut, so I, I firm those in a little bit more to show you. But we do have to remember that we've got this extra section poking out down here. And it's got to be a total of 40 millimetres. Now 40, it's, because it's 1.1, it's going to be 40 point. 44, so to there, we'll have a little angled section here coming in, like that. Draw, ac draw across to indicate the thread. Things getting in my way. Pencil sharpness. Okay, now it's time to start getting serious with this and completing it. Now, sectioned areas, the wash is not going to be sectioned, so I can go all the way along here, no problems. Um, there is the, the top of the nut. I can firm that in. Yep. Um, all the way across, straight across the top here. Yes. This is, constitutes a shaft, so I won't be sectioning that. And now I've got a spring washer, which I can indicate with a little double flat like that. And I've got my threaded section here, which I'm going to show there. Now I won't see it. I won't see that hidden line as it goes through the nuts. Here's the internal depth of the thread. And the same thing on this side. Here's the internal depth of the thread. When it reaches the washer and the nut, I won't see it. It goes all the way down through there. And there's the external. Now you can do a bit of adjustment as you're doing this to make sure that everything is true. Those distances should be quite similar. I've sectioned already here. I'm going to show the bore of the of the item like that. Okay, and now this area, this whole tongue section here will be threaded. Now, if you want to do lots of um, sectioning, then probably a good idea if you set your um, your your angles and just work your your T square all the way through. So this, don't make them too close together because it takes forever to. Um, to do them all. So work your way through, show this section. Remember to change the direction of your your um, your sectioning areas so that you can see clearly there's different sections, especially when they meet up. Yeah, the angle or the intensity is sufficient to do that. Try and keep the distances fairly even as you go across. Now, I'm moving on here. I've got to work out the distances going across. How far does this tongue go before it starts to slope? There's a radius of 40 here, and then it drops down by a distance of 40 there. So we've got to have another distance of 40 from the top edge down to the other edge of the tongue. So I'm going to trace that down. So it's 40, now it'll be 44. 44 to there. So I'm going to make basically to this line here which is very interesting so it's useful. So I'll just continue this line along. This will be the top edge. So the top edge is going to come down to here. Now it does so over a distance over an angle of 30 degrees. Now that's good for me to know. So if I place my, um, my 45 degree set square here and I can organize myself that angle of 30 degrees. The angle of 30 degrees starts 85 millimeters from that top edge, 85. So if I measure 85 from the looks like the back of the tongue, which in itself is 44 from the center line. 
So 85 times 1.1 .1 is going to be uh, 93.5. So 93.5 there. From that point, I'm going to have a 30 degree angle sloping down to meet this horizontal surface. So there it is. Now I'm just going to do it lightly because there's going to be a curvature over here. Now I have the same sort of issue over here. I've got to know that this tongue, this tongue here is a certain width. It's it's the thickness of 16 mil. So if I'm doing that right angle, that perpendicular side, and 16 times 1.1, 17.6. So if I measure 17.6 here make a little mark there. I've got the width, my width, you see, and I can actually trace this or reproduce this curved angle surface, roll it down like that till it reaches the appropriate width, which is there. Well, not really. What they've given me here is something else. They've made it 15 millimeters. So I better be consistent. I'll make it 15 millimeters to keep them happy. And So the drawing itself is not consistent because we've discovered that this is 15 millimeters, which is less than the actual stated size here, and yet the top, the ball is larger than the stated size. So we've just got to go with what we can. Sometimes not everybody gets it right all the time. Okay, so now we have these two intersecting surfaces, and I'm going to trace out how far around this goes. So looking at my dimensions here yet again, I've got. Um, the fact that it travels out 110 millimeters. Now, 110 times 1.1 1 .1 is 121. So it goes 121. It goes a long way out in that direction. All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to, to show it all by the looks of it. The paper is not going to be long enough. So the designers of this particular problem didn't factor that in. So let's throw that out there, and I'm going to have. A perpendicular distance here. I'm just going to line up using the line of the set square down here with that or to get myself a perpendicular distance, perpendicular projection line. And it's going to be 15 millimeters here too. So it's going to go like this. Right, so I'm going to get a curve here, and it says that this curve is a radius 40, 40 millimeters. So I should have a trusty compass here. 40 millimeters, millimeters. I can set this to 40. A little bit more. And you're enough. So we've got a 40 millimetre curve. Not quite sure the, the exact starting and tangent points of this curve, but it is quite a gentle one. So I'm going to just take a stab at it, pick a spot, and create that curve. Now it doesn't, we don't have the time to be able to locate it perfectly and exactly, so I'm just going to give it that rough curve. Now presuming I'm using this spot as my anchor point, my radius location here, I'm going to use this same location, bend location, which is what would be the case if it was manufactured, to create the upper curve, which is a curve on top. Like that. Whoop. Kind of like that. Okay. So it's going to be going in this direction. Alright, so there's my bend. Now I've got a different size curve down the bottom here. Am I told what that curve is? No, there's no radius to describe it, so in that case I'm going to simply freehand it. Notice how I'm turning my wrist so that I've got the arc of my wrist to be able to provide me a natural curve. Like so. And now I'm going to do these two holes down this side over here. 
and they're uh, M16 times 2 and they're located in distances I'm told over here 25 millimeters from the furthest edge and um, so 25 and 50 is 75 minus 110, 25, 35 mil from here. So 35 times 1, so it's about 38 mil is the first one there. So I'm going to have a center line coming down through here at right angles. And then I'm going to have another one located 50 millimeters. Now I can't fit the 50 millimeters on it, so what I'm going to do is create a break line here, like this, and then do the second hole at a distance from it so I can squeeze it in because I'd say that my examiner will want to know that I know that there's two holes and then I'm going to create the holes. Now the holes are M16 again so times 1.1, 17.6 divided by 2 it's around about 9, 9 millimeters in radius 18, same thing here 9 18 and realizing that now I've got to draw these lines they're going to have an internal thread it's going to be a fairly small thread it's two pitch pitch at two so it would really be one millimeter just over one because I'm multiplying it by 1.1 all the time going in here the inside Now just keep an eye on the time when you're doing all this because we don't have a lot of it and it's going to be cross hatched. Cross hatched to here. Cross hatched. Remember when you cross hatch all the way into the internal thread. And because it's a full section, we're going to cross hatch all the way across like that and that is the completed drawing now I could firm in a couple of lines and make it a little bit more clear like that I'll use my ruler to do that when you're firming in lines just be careful make sure that you firm in the correct lines very frustrating if you haven't been able to to firm in the correct lines or you firmed in the wrong correct lines <laughs> which makes them of course incorrect okay so there's the drawing to specs we require to give two dimensions the first one you would indicate with a leader line like that and its diameter 50 and you can specify by saying spherical And the overall dimensions of the tongue we're asked to give as well. We do a leader line that goes down here. And then we have to go all the way across and all the way along to the end of the tongue. Now that's a bit hard because it's a long way. So we're not going to be able to do that. So whoever organised the layout of this drawing with this scale made it impossible to do this. So we're going to just do our best and work it away like this. And at that distance will be... According to the drawing, overall measurement will be uh, 85 plus 110 plus this distance over here through the between the two of them. Now, if I don't can't work all that, I can work that out trigonometrically if I needed to. Um, but what I might do is just take it directly off my drawing. So my drawing starts from here. So that distance to there, so it's 77, so it makes it 70, so that'll be 70 mil, because divided by 1.1, so I have to add 85 plus 70 plus 110 to give the overall dimensions, 8 and 7, 15, I've got 265, so 265, sit it above the dimensioning line, and there's a the completed drawing hopefully all done in time. Bye.